ready, Rex? Yep. All right. We will open the meeting up again, and we will start with a our action item on approving or disapproving the disability request for Suzette Archibald Wilson. I move that we approve the disability request for Ms. Archibald Wilson. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye as well. I need a motion for Keith Rakowski for a disability request. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? To approve the disability request of Keith Rakowski. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye as well. And finally, I need a motion uh, for the disability request of Janet Yoder. Yoder. I would move that we table that request in favor of having a second opinion uh, that at our expense of an MD so appointed by Dr. Schofield. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye as well. updates on uh, one on the IT convergence um, which uh, just as a reminder there was an executive order in May last year from the governor requiring all executive branch agencies to move their infrastructure their IT infrastructure from self-owned or agency-owned hardware over to um, state-owned infrastructure at the state of Montana data center so TRS had has hardware at the data center um, and on the weekend of February 4th and 5th, or uh, yeah, February 4th and 5th, so just a couple weeks ago, we migrated our environment from our owned teacher's retirement system owned IT hardware and migrated it to an ITSD, State of Montana ITSD hosted environment. Um, it, the migration involved moving all of our virtual servers and virtual workstations from the three physical VMware vSphere servers that TRS owns to a virtual server platform, or what ITSD calls a VSP, running on two physical VMware uh, vSphere servers hosted by ITSD. So that, that happened on the weekend, the 4th and 5th. We are now 100% running on ITSD hardware. Our hardware is still in the racks at the data center. We left it there for the month of February as a failover in case of issues so that we could revert back. Um, but we're currently running on their systems. Um, we have one physical server running Open VMS operating system that hosted TRS's legacy Pension Plus pension management system that is still in uh, that is in the rack and that system was not migrated. Uh, we disabled access to Pension Plus in mid December at the completion of MTrust Phase Two project. Um, there's two legacy processes that still required Open VMS. And that was for us to be able to send uh, print jobs to the state mainframe um, from uh, from our MTrust system over to for bulk processing of 1099s and EFT check stubs. Um, we are in the process of moving those, replacing those processes. And there's a phase three project or enhancement to replace this legacy process with a more modern generating PDFs here on site, but that hasn't been implemented yet. So as a temporary fix, uh, um, TRS IT, Rex and myself, we developed a process to transfer the files directly to the state mainframe, bypassing the open BMS system. And we did a proof of concept of that last week with 1099, successfully moved those over, and we will be doing EFTs at the end of the month, uh, uh, the EFT check steps for monthly payroll. We're gonna send those over to the mainframe, bypassing the open BMS. Once those two processes, uh, this last EFT process, has been verified and functional, 
there will no longer be a need for open BMS system and we will shut it down um, completely. And uh, we are scheduled to remove all of our hardware on Monday the 27th from the data center. That will keep us from getting billed for having our hardware in the data center, receiving a monthly bill for that in the month of March. And then the month of March will be our first monthly billing for the new hosted environment. So as part of the IT convergence, ITSD doesn't double bill. We're not being billed for this month of February while we're running on their system right now, on their hosted environment, because we're still paying for the rack space that we're consuming um, in there at the data center. So we'll get our equipment out at the end of the month, and then our first month of billing will, will come in March. Um, Regarding the OpenBMS system and Pension Plus, we do have an inquiry into AMA, our developers, for Trust, to ask them if there's a desire or a need to maintain <coughs> access to the old Pension Plus management system, at least for some period of time, maybe through the project, through phase three project of Trust. If it's determined that that's desirable, we, uh, Rex and I have a plan to uh, deploy that server here on site in the building. We have a, a dual server room downstairs and uh, to make it accessible for AMA um, for reference purposes. So, But uh, we haven't heard back from them on that right now. Um, teachers Retirement Systems IBM FileNet Enterprise Content Management System was moved and is now running on state ITSE hosted equipment. Um, per the requirements of IT convergence, that system is supposed to migrate to the new Lexmark Perceptive Enterprise Content Management System for the state. But we do not have any uh, date set for that migration, but it will happen um, sometime this year. Um, the requirements, for the mandate from the IT convergence was that everything was supposed to be moved by December 31st, 2017, so we're assuming that we'll get that maybe sometime towards the summer. And we'll move, uh, we currently have about 800,000 documents in our content management system and they'll have to migrate and we'll make sure that that gets verified and we've got a plan to run both of those systems simultaneously as well for a time until we can verify that everything was moved successfully. Um, the other thing I wanted to update you on was that um, an incident response plan uh, regarding a potential uh, data breach and I'm sure we all hear about this other companies all around all the time. So uh, we're in the process of developing a data breach incident response plan. Um, I've got a basic outline right now and I'm doing a lot of data gathering and some research on designing the plan. But the plan will outline in detail the steps to be taken in the event of a data breach is discovered in a TRS information system. Um, the plan will specify a response team from the teacher's retirement system and include details on activating the state of Montana's data breach insurance through the state's vendor, which is Beasley, which is a Lloyd of London company. Um, and that activation occurs through the Department of Administration's Risk Management and Tort Division. So we'll put together a plan that details what we'll do if we ever discover a data breach, how to activate the insurance, get the Risk Management and Tort Division involved, and take appropriate <coughs> steps uh, regarding our responsibilities for notifying appropriate uh, members uh, and appropriate authorities and, and how to handle this in, in the event we ever do suffer a data breach. Additionally, we plan to establish monitoring processes um, on TRS information systems so that we can more actively um, review logs and access to our systems to hopefully discover a data breach in the event one ever occurs. So, um, the, our plan right now is to have uh, the data breach, data breach response plan and monitoring processes in place and finalized by the next board meeting. So um, that is, that's my goal. Yeah, at least draft. I mean, we'll have a, a draft that's been finalized in draft form for the board to at least review. And then I don't know about the, do you think the processes will be? The monitoring processes? I think those ones are actually relatively easy for us to, to set up. Um, and so it'll be taking a look at what we're what we have now, um, and then maybe enhancing through log files, uh, creating a specification of log files on all of our servers that we can review on a weekly basis and just verify that that the access we see hitting our servers are people that we expect to be accessing our servers and looking for anomalies. 
<laughs> so I, I mean, Scott and I went to the NCTR conference, Denise went to the NAP conference, Tammy went to the um, GFOA conference. I mean, it's and it's been this way now for several years. I mean, there's always a uh, section of each of these national conferences devoted to cybersecurity, um, and you know, they it's a common theme. They all say the only you've either been hacked or you just don't know you've been hacked, and so. It seems important for us to have everything laid out in a, a plan that's specific to TRS and what our each step, what our steps are, and who does on them. Uh, so I asked John to do that, and he's jumped in with both feet. I think we'll end up having something useful. Hopefully, we never have to use it, but um, it's better to have this figured out ahead of time instead of after the fact. Is that part of the? Uh, software writing program that MTrust is undergoing it on their own, or is this all an after-the-fact external process that John is doing? Uh, the, the plan itself, the incident response plan, will be outside the development of MTrust, and that's something okay. that we'll be doing here at TRS internally. I guess what I'm asking, John, is, is, is it, does MTrust, in the way they're under, the way they're writing that software, I know nothing about that, but are they doing anything internally to try and create protection mechanisms by which it makes it harder to get a data breach? I, yeah, definitely. Uh, and we had our security vendor, we had a third party vendor, Serium Networks, do uh, at the end of phase two, they performed yeah. another um, uh, evaluation of our system um, and having to do with the MyTRS portal, the, the members portal that the, that the vendor, our employers, the school districts, and our members access. Just looking for standard uh, um, weaknesses and came back with a clean bill of slate suggesting that the developers have done a really good job on building that. What we're actually looking for though here are, um, is if by looking at reviewing log files is um, maybe a, an actual authorized access of a valid account hitting the hitting a server but repeatedly at, I mean, if you were to see one account come in you know, 500 times a month. I mean, something that, that would suggest an anomaly that needs to definitely be looked into, because that's, it's not really a weakness in the system, more as, as somebody left a username and a password sitting out in the open, or, or, or someone's um, system at home got hacked, and um, I see. and then the, the hackers reach out and start actually trying to utilize what they found. So um, I think reviewing logs and establishing logs will help us a, a long ways just looking for anomalies. Uh, we've recently deployed a new uh, state firewall and uh, teacher retirement got set up on it last uh, about two months ago. Rex and I have been watching the, lo uh, the actual log files on a daily basis the first few weeks after we migrated. The system's called F5. And uh, we actively block access to our website from all but five countries. And the amount of traffic that hits and is rejected by the firewall coming from other com countries would probably astound you. But it's tens of thousands of hits a week coming from every country that you can think of. Seriously. That it, 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 it's, it's absolutely shocking. Hitting the TRS web server, not hitting the state's firewall, but actually coming into trying to get to our web server. So. We're, at, we're allowing access from five countries. We're denying access from every other country. And we actually have a few members that have called up um, that have to use a VPN tunnel into the United States to be able to, act, to access our website because of where they happen to be physically located. But looking at the, the log files on the F5 firewall, um, it kind of gives you an idea of what, if you, if you were to run unprotected, the kind of risk you'd be faced with so the good news is, is that the state has a lot of tools in place, to put protections in place. What we're really doing is not looking so much for a weakness in our system as much as in some activity in the system that doesn't seem to coincide with regular legitimate activity. Uh, a school district employee that, that logs into the system 500 times a month. Uh, a member that logs into the system 50 times in the night. I, I mean, I think once we establish some process, we can actually review that, and it gives us peace of mind and due diligence to say that we're, we're reviewing this, we're looking for anomalies outside of what the, the system provides. 
Can we guess what the five countries are that are allowed? <laughs> sure. Canada, England, France, uh, Germany, and not Russia. Mexico. <laughs> Mexico's not allowed. Not allowed? Yeah. So, That's right. I'll be checking. Germany? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was. Um, now I can remember. I had the report and I gave it to Carla with the five listed on it, but I don't yeah. remember who they yeah. were off the top of my head. So what we've done is the countries that are opened up, but we look at where we have members. Yeah. And, and there's some, I know that I spoke to a member a couple weeks ago oh. who is in, I want to say Costa Rica, okay. and had to use a VPN tunnel to get in okay. that runs to the United States to be able to access or block them outside. So, um, but yeah, that's the, in, the, with regards to monitoring, and um, I think we can implement processes to monitor and to do a better job of looking for, actively looking for anomalies in a relatively uh, short period of time. I think it's a matter of establishing logs on the servers um, and, then, and then intentionally going through on a weekly basis, scheduling the upload reviews and just looking for anomalies. So, uh, and our tools available to help us do that, the states the um, Australia, Canada, Israel, Monaco, and the United States. Interesting. Everybody else knows. <laughs> That, they must have got a big inheritance or something. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wondered the same thing. Retired <laughs> On a teacher salary. <laughs> there you go. Oh, gosh. Well, the only reason why they're there is there are no retired teachers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> teacher shortage. Yeah, there's a teacher shortage. Interesting. Well, I, I think that makes a lot of sense from my perspective. Having looked at stuff from the school side and just seeing how our systems get hit, and where all our stuff is pretty mundane when it comes to all of this, uh, but you know, just the amazing things that start to happen, like new users created and all kinds of stuff that has, you know, you, you just have to pay attention for once in a while. Definitely, and I think that's what we're, we're moving towards. This is actively paying attention and looking for stuff that. Seemed out of ordinary. Yeah. Thank you. 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 All right, Mom, do you, should we grab some food? Or should we pass that around? Yeah, let's see. Can we do the long range then? Yeah, okay, why not? Because I have a chance to sign these and we'll get these done. Want some milk? I was just going to set the drinks out here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> We got everybody a drink. Because some of you yeah, I'll see if I can figure out what those are. I have the list. What? They don't label them. They did. Oh, here we go. Oh, they aren't you? Oh, they aren't you? Okay, cool. Uh, Tammy. Oh, thank you. That one's light. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it is. Okay. Dan. Yes. Thank you. Terry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 